because after the Apollo missions, uh, uh, you know, people uh, stop going to the moon or looking at the moon uh, very closely. Uh, now, are we are we picking up some real estate there? Yeah, I don't know. I just if we're candid about our my own American history, we didn't go to the moon because we're explorers and it's in our DNA. We went to the moon because we were scared of the Soviet Union. And if they got to the moon first, they would have the high ground. What does that mean? Does that influence our safety, our democracy? So there was a lot of geopolitics going on at the time. And then when we learned they were not going to the moon, we ended the Apollo program. Okay, it's not that we lost our drive, it's that we lost the geopolitical force that was uh, that was that was sending us there in the first place. Right now, all of these missions are peaceful, so that's a good thing. And so, a colony on the moon, I don't foresee people living there permanently, but you can have visiting scientists come and spend time, maybe set up telescopes across where the dark area is. I can imagine all kinds of science. That would unfold there. And would there so, be yeah, some aliens to what, there? To what comes. You know, maybe. Say again? <laughs> because that's what folklore is all about. On oh, the dark oh, side oh, of the moon. Moon aliens. <laughs> Did you say aliens on the moon? Yeah, dark side yeah. of the moon. That would, could be fun to find aliens. That would be a new form of life. So we bring biologists with us. All right? <laughs> that would be discovery. I love it. Um, I... I, I I want to meet the aliens. Bring them on. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Tyson, on a serious note, uh, how how does this really change uh, India's position on the high table in the world? You know, many people even today think India is a poor country. Uh, it's a land of elephants and snake charmers uh, um, all over. That's, that's uh, sometimes, uh, you know, the imagery that India does draw. Today, with the... Uh, Chandrayaan-3 landing uh, on, on the dark side of the moon and the fact that uh, India's Chandrayaan is uh, successful where Russia's uh, moon mission hasn't been. Uh, does that really change the perception of India in the world today? So the, the uh, elephants and snake charmers, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, that's an aspect of what we learn about India, of course. But in modern times, there's the subset of the Indian population who have risen in the scientific and technological world that have borne their brilliance in the rest of what's going on in the world. There's, there's no shortage of Indians in the United States who are leaders in our tech world. So I think in recent decades, no, Americans were not thinking of India as a place of snake charmers. No, no. Maybe 50 years ago, not today. All right. Um, uh, some of our highest tech people have Indian roots. They may be American citizens, but they came from India. Okay. And and they're later, latter day American citizens. So we, we know the potential of the Indian population here in the United States. That's my first point. Second is about the poverty. Yes, surely you have people there saying, why are we spending money up in space when we have such abject poverty here on Earth? That's a legitimate question to ask. But allow me to say that India had poverty before anyone spent a dime on space. Okay, so you can't look at space and say, that's why you have poverty or you shouldn't have poverty because you have space. That, that's, those are false equivalencies. What I can tell you is, if there's any hope of raising a nation out of poverty, it's investments in science and technology. Absolutely. Every place in the world where that has happened, the economy of that nation has risen. And, and, and the base level of who you call poor has risen. So, that, so India has a long way to go in that department, yes. But I know of no greater force than ambitions in space that can operate on the economy of a nation because tomorrow's economies will pivot on innovations in science and technology today. Absolutely. And just before I let you go, in the last one decade, uh, do you think India 
has grown in stature uh, on the on the global fora? I think. Well, yeah. I mean, I think. I, I don't know what you think in your borders, but I. India has always been a very important country in this world. The largest democracy, now the largest country in the world, passing China in population by the latest numbers that I've seen, and how deep and strong the culture is. But anyone who visits India is completely consumed by everything Indian there that was retained long after the, the, the period of colonization from England, right? Uh, in, so, uh, and India, we finally, finally saw India in the Olympics, okay? <laughs> that was, was a shot putter. Welcome to the Olympics now. Um, so there's a, there's, very, there's a lot of upside. Uh, dare I repeat this earlier comment that the sky is not the limit for India. Be, and it depends on how you need wise governance. And I cannot overemphasize that you want all citizens to participate in this. Because if the United States were today the way it was in the 1960s, you would not be interviewing a black person about your space program. Because I had opportunities that arose over those decades that previously I was shut off from because of laws and Absolutely. legislation and attitudes. So it's important that everybody participates.